Welcome to the Week in Review, the show that brings you up to date on the week that was. Here are the top stories. Infosys underperforms and posts a low guidance. The Maharaja gets a government bailout. And India opens up to FDI from Pakistan. We start with IT giant Infosys. On Friday, the company announced its earnings for the fourth quarter and its guidance for the current fiscal. But it disappointed investors on both counts. Revenues for the fiscal 2011-12 climbed just 15.8%. Infosys had issued a guidance of 16.3% for the year and is known for being very conservative with its projections. This is the first time the company has actually fallen behind its annual guidance. Not surprisingly, its guidance for the fiscal year 2012-13 is a mere 8 to 10 percent. Ashok Vemuri, the Infosys head for North America, said the company would focus on high-quality growth rather than outsourcing, which was commoditized. Meanwhile, Infosys didn't do especially well in the fourth quarter either. Net profit fell 2.4 percent sequentially to 2,316 crore, and revenue dropped 4.8 to 8,852. Moving to aviation, there's actually some good news for Air India. On Thursday, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs approved a massive 30,000 crore bailout plan for the airline. It also approved a financial restructuring plan. Starting with the bailout, Air India will get an assured equity support of 23,481 crore until the fiscal year 2021. There will also be an upfront equity infusion of 6,750 crore. On top of this dole, Air India will also be able to restructure its huge pile of short-term loans. The cabinet approved the restructuring of more than 21,000 crore worth of working capital loans into long-term debt. What's more, Air India will get a one-year moratorium on interest payments. It will also be able to pay up nearly 6,000 crore in dues in addition to other dues to employees. In other news, the legal battle between markets regulator SEBI and the MCX exchange is finally headed towards a resolution. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court disposed a special leave petition from SEBI on the issue. But that dismissal came only after both sides arrived at an agreement. According to the consent terms reached, SEBI will modify regulations on the buyback of shares. SEBI and MCX will then act in concert three months from now on the issue of equities trading. At present, MCX can only trade in currency derivatives. SEBI had petitioned the Supreme Court after the Bombay High Court set aside its order stopping MCS from offering equity trading. In related developments, the government has eased the rules for foreign investments in India's commodities exchanges. FIIs will no longer need government approval before buying up to 23% in a commodity exchange. The move will bring the norms for commodities exchanges in line with stock exchanges. At present, total foreign investment in an exchange can reach 49%, but it needs a green light from authorities. Also, FIIs can hold a maximum of 23%, while FDI can take up no more than 26%. Moving to the economy, new figures indicate the country's factory output remains sluggish. The index of industrial production for February was lower than most expectations. It rose just 4.1% during the month and the revised figure for January now stands at a mere 1.1%. The reduced numbers for January's IIP reflect the volatility of the index. The drastic revision came largely because of an error in the estimate for sugar production. And a new estimate suggests growth in India is unlikely to accelerate anytime soon. The Asian Development Bank says the country's economy will only grow at 7% this fiscal, which is nearly the same as 6.9% estimate for the financial year gone by. Its estimate for 2013 and 14 is 7.5%. Still, ADB adds that the 7.5% estimate depends on India removing structural bottlenecks and the global economy improving. ADP's numbers are markedly more pessimistic than the Indian government's, which projects 7.6% growth in the current fiscal. And here are some stories in brief. Pakistanis will soon be able to invest directly in India. On Friday, Commerce Minister Anand Sharma said the government had taken an in-principle decision to allow FDI from Pakistan. Annual trade between the two countries currently stands at about $2.6 billion. Max New York Life is changing its foreign partner. On Thursday, the chairman of Max India, Analjit Singh, said Japan's Mitsui Sumitomo Insurance would buy out New York Life's 26% stake in their joint venture. The deal will be an all-cash one worth 2,731 crore. And finally, you could be using 4G mobile services very soon. On Tuesday, Bharti Airtel, the country's biggest telecom operator, launched its 4G network in Kolkata. 
It plans to roll out the services in Bangalore within a month. 4G services allow for high-speed broadband access on mobile devices. And that's all we have for you. Thanks for watching.